What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Red Cat Live, episode 127 to be exact. We got a doozy for you today. I always wanted to say that. I always felt like there's something really cool about saying that we got a doozy here for you today. So we do. We got a doozy. His name is Shane Makula, and he's here with us. What's up? How's it going? How you doing? Pretty good. Good. All right, get out. You're done. Oh, nah, I'm just kidding. Hey, guys, so check it out, man. Today's going to be a little bit of a different episode. We're going to talk specifically about the ascent today. So for those of you guys that are just chiming in that want to know more about uh, lowriders or more about the mini truck or more about said, uh, you know, off-road vehicles, whatever it is that is your poison, today we're going to focus strictly on the ascent and some of the hop-ups that we've been seeing already offered within the community itself, as well as some things that uh, we think you guys can benefit from. So welcome to the show. If this is your first time, make sure you click the notification bell. Make sure you give us a like if you can. And if you don't, I mean, that's fine, too, if you just, you know, don't want to, you know, be cool like that. But if you want to be cool, make sure you drop us a like. Even drop a taco for your boy, because you know it's always a good time. Check it. We're in the new studio now. It is not done by any means. So, of course, we're still using the green screen that you guys see behind me. With that, that means that uh, I usually look here to read all my comments. And now I have to look over here to the right to read some comments. So it might... Throw me off a little bit, so bear with me, because my muscle memory wants to be over here. So, first and foremost, let's say what's up to a couple folks. CJ Hicks, representing Dallas. Thank you so much for stopping on by. Uh, we got RC Patina Guy, man. What's good with you, man? Hey, RC Patina Guy, hope you don't mind. I took that image that you shared of your black COE hauler, and I did go ahead and re-edit it my way. I hope you don't mind that I, I did that, but I just wanted to make it pop a little bit. And, man, great shot, great photo. That was shared with everyone on all of the pages yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. So keep up that great job. Jason Oatman, man, thank you so much for stopping on by. Yoshi Rivera, always good having you on board as well. Um, uh, let's see. R.C. Bettina Girls Snow, any 59 interiors available? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, hopefully we'll get that squared away here pretty soon. I know you already called everyone in the company because everyone's been talking <laughs> about it already. So chill, bro. Okay. Um, Yoshi, man, what's going on with you, man? Representing Chicago, man. I love it. Cody Welker, man. He's representing Crawl Daddy, he says. Oh, what up? Is that your new nickname? No. Shane no. Crawl Daddy McCool. I like That's a great sound to it, bro. Ridiculous. I love it. Guys, make sure you guys give Crawl Daddy some love, man. Make sure you guys are giving. What do you want? You don't want a taco. What do you want? Do you want like an ice cream cone? Or I'll take an ice cream cone. Ice cream cone. Yeah. Throw some cake or ice cream cones. Cut cones. <laughs> Cones out for your boy here. Uh, Jim Pal Palazzolo, how you doing, man? Thank you for stopping by. Nefdog45, always good having you back. JD's RC, man, what's good with you, man? How you doing? Um, Yoshi says, I'm here for the first... <laughs> I'm here for the first time, and I want to know what's a red cat. Right there. He's a cat, and he's red. Well, when he goes in the sun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's a cool right. cat, though. Uh, Nelson B, tacos for life, man. I love it, man. I love my tacos. I appreciate it, guys. Fishing Bill... What's good with you, homie? How are you? Uh, Robert Sanchez from Utah, man. What's good with you? Appreciate you stopping on by as well. Um, let's see. Kevin Simmons, when would the Buick Riviera body come out? Man, we've been talking about this nonstop for months, bro. Go back and watch some of the other episodes because I'm tired of repeating myself. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm going to be just, I'm done. I'm over it. Just kidding. Uh, man, we hope to have the final sample hopefully arriving here in the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get that before Chinese New Year kicks mm -hmm. off uh, so that we can make that official order on the bodies. Obviously, when a body is made, samples are shipped into us. Mm -hmm. We have to then inspect them for any impurities, mm -hmm. maybe lines in the mold. Any other issues that you know of, Shane? Uh, yeah, just tweaking them. And slight adjustments? Yeah. Okay. And then, obviously, once everyone is fully happy with it, we can finally make that full order to get those coming. Usually, that would take another, you know, I don't know what, 60 to 90 days after that, on average? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. So, so it kind of depends on shipping. Sure, yeah. sure. So just know we are working on it and hopefully get uh, a better answer for you once we know they're in the air or on the boat. Uh, we'll let you guys know as well. But great question. Thank you so much for that, Kevin. Um, let's see. Madrigal, custom turntable. What's, what's up, man? Thank you for stopping by as well. Fish and Bill, thank you for that, man. You, you know, you, you recognize me. The beer's iconic. So, you know, I mean, it's the only thing you probably still recognize. <laughs> See, you got an ice cream cone. Yeah, boy. Ridiculous. I love it, man. I love it. See, yeah, Chris says we need a talk co C O E. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I love it. That's a good one right there. Um, Keith King says, I got frozen tacos from Kansas for you. 
<laughs> All right, guys. So as we mentioned before, today's episode is going to focus primarily on the Red Cat Ascent. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what an Ascent is, these are Ascents. Well, these are more modified, modified versions of the yeah. Ascent. This is Shane's personal truck, mm -hmm. uh, which he's got uh, a lot of hours and uh, testing runtime on it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my freshly rebuilt Ascent, which started as a stock Ascent. Uh, we ended up, uh, him and I, both have MIP drive lines inside of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've changed motors, ESCs. We've changed uh, servos uh, as well. I believe you changed your servo, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then also I installed the servo winch on mine. Mm -hmm. Different shocks that were both running. Um, we're running uh, Rock Pirate, RC, front and rear. Uh, shock towers. Shock Sorry, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, as well as some other little tidbits that we have from HTAC that we've installed as well. So a um, lot of things are starting to come to fruition when it comes to the Ascent, and we love that the aftermarket is carrying on with mm -hmm. it. We don't want to be like other brands that, you know, tell you not to use our name in the products you sell. We want your products to sell because you're supporting us, the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time supporting the hobby, create awesome products that folks can truly enjoy and uh, and take on. So uh, we appreciate that, we, we love it, and uh, one of the things that we wanna highlight today is some of those said brands mm -hmm. that are doing things for the Ascent specifically. So um, let me double check your questions. We'll also be going over like just little tips and tricks just to make it better for free. Uh, just sometimes you don't have to spend a dollar and you can make it better. Uh, so uh, Absolutely. Depends. You know, one of the, the best things or one of the things that we heard from a lot of people is, you know, when we sold the truck originally, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a baseline setup, mm -hmm. right? And we saw that a lot of folks, depending on the way you drive and, and your needs, people would want a little bit more articulation. So mm -hmm. we're going to go over how to remove the internal spring of the shock itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a shock already pulled off of the truck. Uh, you can actually do a lot of these with the shock still installed on mm -hmm. the truck just by disconnecting them from the shock mounts uh, and then you can access it. So we'll go over that with a uh, up-close camera that Shane has set up over mm -hmm. by him to show you guys how to do that. But let's kind of get into it, man. Let's, let's talk about some of these products that kind of come to mind. Uh, one of the first products, set of products that I should say uh, I like is some products made by HTEC. HTEC has uh, kind of been a, a newcomer that I'm aware of anyways, unless some of you guys know them, please correct me if I'm wrong. But HTEC kind of came out swinging, offering some uh, parts for the Ascent specifically, like the uh, front metal grill, offering in a couple variety of colors. They do offer some blue ones as well, depending on the body that you chose. Uh, the rear bumper mount with LED lights installed on it. The aluminum metal front uh, bar or bumper itself. These have become kind of popular in the last uh, couple months. I actually use a, a version of that as well uh, on my personal truck. You also find things like uh, a metal link riser. I actually run this one on my truck specifically. I'm pretty happy with the way it's come out. Uh, definitely something to look forward to using. Um, then you also have parts like your custom link mounts, right, for the actual links themselves. Uh, bumpers, uh, I mean, the, the part list is, is goes on and on and on of things that are offered. They even have tow hitches uh, available as well as aluminum baskets for your ascent. So definitely something to kind of take a look at. I know, Shane, you've been able to see a couple of these parts uh, in action. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. so far on H Tech? And is there anything that you like so far from what you've seen? They're pretty solid. Um, we've seen a lot of guys, like, if you fall, like, 50 feet, it's possible to break a pan hard. Um, that's just kind of just how the pan hards are. Um, but they make a metal one, so it's pretty solid. The... Uh, the link riser too. Um, if you're doing like straight vertical climbs all the time, a link riser helps move your um, uh, the rear link up, so it'll let you climb a little better. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, yeah. kind of, it kind of helps change the geometry just enough so that you get a little more bite out of the rear, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, especially when you're trying to wrap that axle around a rock. Yeah, it right. basically pushes the front down. Right. Lifts the rear. So definitely, guys, uh, any products that we're showing you guys and pages thereof, they will be listed in the description of this video. So if you are looking for them, make sure you guys swing on over and uh, check those out and uh, utilize them as needed. Uh, now, HTEC, again, uh, parts, I've been able to get them without any problems. Definitely buy with confidence. Check them out. Uh, definitely bring something cool to the table. Next up is some awesome parts from, of course, none other than some of the best in the industry, in my opinion. Some great guys as well. Rock Pirates RC. 
Uh, they offer front and rear shock tower mounts, and I actually run these, so does Shane, mm -hmm. on our uh, ascents. Uh, and some of the things that you're gonna notice in comparison to the stock ones is that they do sit quite a bit lower, mm -hmm. right Shane? Uh, any other things that stand out to you as well? So they actually do lean them back a little bit more than we do stock. Um, in order to do that, you have to pull uh, the screw that holds your lower pan hard mount off and flip it around. Um, that'll give you a little more clearance for the shock to sit back, especially with the stock shocks. Um, but yeah. Right. And if one ventures to say yeah. you want to go even further back, you can uh, run a metal mm -hmm. uh, pan hard mount, or not, what is it, the Yeah, so H -Tech, yeah, H Tech makes a pan hard mount that only has one side of the, um, of the mount on it. So you can actually lean the shock back a little more. Right, so if that's kind of your style and you want to go with that, definitely something worth checking out. And again, they offer them for the front as well as the rear, and they offer them in black, silver, and red. So again, great guys to work with. These guys actually have been selling because these are sold out at the moment as well. They were not sold out an hour ago when I opened this link up. So uh, great parts that are available, guys, for your um, uh, ascent. Definitely something to look forward to. Um, I actually am planning on potentially doing an interceptor swap at some mm -hmm. point with the Ascent. I, I do like Rock Pirates' products, so definitely check them out. Definitely worth looking into. Another pro set of products that you guys should also look into is DSM Off-Road. DSM Off-Road has now started offering a, quite a variety of products as well. Some of the things that you're going to notice right off the bat is going to be their high clearance sliders that fits the DSM uh, Red Cat Ascent Rock Warrior chassis. So it is specific for their chassis that they offer. They also now offer link risers as well that they have. And these actually look to be, uh, they look like molded, right? They don't look like they're printed. But again, we've been seeing this quite a bit lately with HTEC as well. Uh, kind of been a very popular mod that we've mm -hmm. been seeing across the realms of the crawler scene in general. Um, you also have a micro servo uh, full size adapter for you to install a, let's say, a micro 99 servo winch if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. They also have a, a bed as well for the ascent, uh, especially for the two body specifically. Uh, body posts for you to mount to your stock towers if you wanted to mount the body with posts. You also have an 850 mob front battery tray that fits the Ascent as well. And of course, their very well known and established Rock Warrior competition chassis that they offer as well. So uh, there it is showing you installed on the Ascent uh, and uh, ready to rock and roll. So that's uh, uh, DSM Off-Road. Thank you guys everywhere, every one of you guys at DSM that are supporting Red Cat and uh, making products for this uh, vehicle. We love mm -hmm. it. We appreciate it. We can't wait to see what else you guys do in the future. Yeah, especially if you're looking for, like, the Ascent's not technically a Class 2 truck. Um, it's a flat skid, um, so you can run it in Class 1 with a different set of tires, um, which we kind of wanted it to be general purpose, mm -hmm. um, but still, like, a low center of gravity. So if you really want, like, a Class 2 that has an angled skid and some of the other features that come with um, some stuff that you're not allowed to do in Class 1, the Rock Warrior chassis is pretty solid for Class 2. Right. So definitely, guys, mm -hmm. again, DSM Off-Road, they've been in the game for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're not new guys on the block, so make sure you guys check them out. Again, another place where I, I definitely think that buying with confidence is uh, mm -hmm. is definitely going to be a good experience for you, shopping mm -hmm. with them. Well, and he sold out of these in like three days, four days. Oh, wow. Days, so yeah, he did good for himself. Pretty popular. And now they're back on pre-order, so yeah. he's obviously making some more. Now, next up is actually one of my favorites, um, and I actually have these parts installed on my truck right now as we speak, and I'll show you guys on video uh, what they look like, but this is none other than Hardcore RC. Hardcore RC started creating links for the crawler scene many moons ago. They've been a big supporter and sponsor of the Autism Awareness Crawl that ASD Crawlers hosts every year. They offer high clearance links. Uh, in this situation for the Ascent, the front are not high clearance, but the rears, as you can see, uh, do have uh, a bend to them, which gives them a little more high clearance. Keep in mind that when you go to a high clearance link, you're, you are going to leave the bottom of the, uh, I would say, pinion the, yeah. to the drive shaft, yeah, exactly. slightly exposed. So if you're running plastic, you're gonna get a little bit more wear and tear on it. So keep that in mind. You guys can see how it's kind of exposed there a little bit. I don't mind it, I'm running MIPs, and I know MIPs are gonna do the trick and they're gonna hold up to the test of time, so I'm not too worried about that at all. 
One of the great benefits that I personally love about uh, Lance and the whole team over there at Hardcore RC is when they make links, they color code, color code all of their links and then give you a guide as to what colors go where. So, you know, your red will be your, you know, pan hard, your uh, green, light greens will be your uppers, your dark green will be your lower fronts. And then when you go to the rear, you know, you can have a different color for the rear, dark blue for the lowers, light blue for the uppers. So uh, they offer these in two formats, stainless steel or titanium. Titanium is $25 more, uh, and they do offer them in a couple variety of sizes. If you want the stock 12.3 size, that'll be an option. He does offer them in a 12.5 and a 12.8 option as well. Once you go ahead and pick out um, said products, you can then at that point, um, where is it? You can then at that point um, choose whether you want him to pre-install the rod ends or if you want to do it yourself. If you're a newbie, it may be worth doing and having them do them for you. If you have been in the scene before and you just don't want to jack up your hands because it's a pain sometimes, you might want to pay them to do it as well. But if you're like me that uh, doesn't mind and I sit in front of a TV and start building these, Definitely kind of a great way to do it. They actually sell a tool. Um, I don't know who sells it. Uh, TGA makes one, T I yeah, believe. Uh, Team Gear Hack? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, or Garage Hack. Garage Hack sells, I believe, a metal uh, tool for you to spin your rod ends on mm -hmm. to your uh, links, which is clutch on so many levels. So make sure you guys check them out again. Uh, thank you, Hardcore RC, for offering parts. I got mine. I ordered them. I was one of the first ones to order them when they became available, and I was sold on having them. I ha it was a must-have for me. Uh, one of the last things that we're going to go over when it comes to the parts is, of course, Trio. Trio's been in the game and supporting Red Cat for many moons on end. And they're offering products such as overdrive gears, uh, aluminum upper center link mounts. Uh, they're offering brass lower link mounts, as well as just aluminum ones. And then all of your standard brass, because brass apocalypse, right? You mm -hmm. guys are all about that. I have a little bit of brass, so I can't talk a lot of crap today, because I am running some Trio brass on it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'll... I needed to stay planted, and, uh, you know, that was my thing. But, again, Trio, thank you guys so much, everyone over there. They are experiencing Chinese New Year, so there may be a little bit of delay on ordering from them if they don't have it in stock. But they will replenish things as soon as Chinese New Year finishes, which is somewhere around February 18th, February 20th. So uh, if you want to change axle housings and aluminum, they have them as well. Uh, they also have uh, front steering knuckles, uh, rear knuckles, weighted or non-weighted uh, so yes just know that whatever you choose to do uh, if you're enjoying the crawler scene i'm just happy that there's actually stuff available and it's not just from one brand are we ever going to offer anything shane uh at some point it's possible it, it's possible see no. that i like that possibility that would be mm -hmm. amazing in itself um so tell me a little bit about your scent because we're talking to scents mm -hmm. and i noticed that you're my scent sits they sit a little low, but yours mm -hmm. sits super low. So what are some of the things that you did to yours that makes it stand out from a stock one? Because you have quite a bit going on on your personal one. Uh, yeah. So um, for mine, I'm actually running um, the Deluxe Super Shorts. I think they're like 70s or 80s, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. um, so that gets the front really low. Um, you do have to worry about like what servo horn and servo you're running because um, it could actually hit the diff. Sure. Um, and that's really it. It doesn't have as much articulation up front as like stock would. Um, right, but it, you're, you're maxed out even just sitting here. It's it's not too bad. I mean, not that, that's have, all the no motion that's in your all shock. The like it's yeah. bottomed out. There's a little bit there. I mean, but that's mo most of the rear doing that. So yeah. So we're you know actually yours goes up a little higher than mine does. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, so it, it kind of depends. So um, so deluxe shocks. Mm -hmm. That's what you're running? Yep. What size? Uh, the fronts I'm running, the super shorts, and the rear I'm running, the regular shorts. Nice. Um, so you have some limiting straps as well to kind of give it some some bite back, right? Some yeah, so like while you're going vertical, it kind of helps. Same with side hilling. Um, I think these are D's bands. Okay. Um, so they're and pretty see, solid. Nothing see. matches color-wise, but I've been going between different trucks with a bunch of different stuff, so eventually that'll change. Right, I notice so. uh, you got front and rear bumpers. Are, are mm -hmm. those the G-Speed? Uh, the G Speed Titanium ones, yeah. Nice, nice. So. Um, what else? What, uh, what's your wheel and tire combo on your bad boy? Uh, these are Boom Racing, I think the Ultra Wides, or okay. the, just the Wides. I, I don't remember what they call them. And then um, J Concepts, 
What are these ruptures? Ruptures. Yeah. yeah. And then um, squid inserts for the inserts. Nice, so nice. Servo electronics. Um, did you swap out? Uh, yeah. So I'm running a. You're like, which one is this? It's a Futaba A703 and a Reefs 800 IS internal winch. Nice. The Futaba servo is definitely way overkill. Um, mm -hmm. Our stock servo is more than enough for 95% of situations. Um, but I had the servo sitting around for another build. So and you're like, this is the perfect time, right? Yeah. I see you got uh, so. a, a you know, light bar in the front. Mm -hmm. have, you have a light bar in the rear to light up the rear as yep. well. Uh, anything else that you've done to it uh, that kind of stands out? Um, I, know well got, I know you got the Rock Pirate shock towers. Yep. Uh, it's got a revolver and um, a micro, I think it's Micro Mamba X2 okay. is the new one. Nice. Um, nice. That's really it. Right. Um, it's got different frame rails. It's got titanium frame rails. They're the stock geometry. Um, I just like titanium. You just had to be so extra, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, you know, my Whatever. drift car is titanium. Yeah. you got to make this titanium. I you feel know. you. I feel you. But so, not bad. Not bad Yeah, geometry-wise, it's all stock. Very cool. So, so I think uh, I think you and me are going to have to go out one of these weekends and start mm -hmm. uh, kind of comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. You know, I do need to go out. to a smaller tire. These are kind of cheating. I but, mean, you know. listen, there's people out there that have 4.7s that have... 4.25s written on them. I mean, yeah, you never know. You know, you know, there's always a there's there's always something out there for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but no man, I love it, man. The truck looks good. Um, I kind of went a slightly different route uh, mm -hmm. with mine. I ended up uh, uh, going with the uh, DSM off road carbon fiber rails on mine, but I ended mm -hmm. up using the Rock Pirate towers front and rear. I just liked them a little bit more uh, for what I wanted to use with the length. Um, I am running Chronic shocks uh, front and rear. They are, I believe, 90 mils, um, and then I am running a Reefs 777 uh, steering servo and a 299 LP servo winch in the front, uh, Fusion Pro um, ESE motor combo, and uh, I run everything off of, I believe, a 2200 Ma 3S. Um, now, now I'm going to make myself a liar here. Hold on. Um, yeah, 2200 uh, Gen's Ace battery pack. Um, and I obviously have my 777 directly plugged into the battery as well um, with a quick disconnect as needed so that I'm not sucking down power. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have limiting straps on the front as well because I, I didn't want the front to kind of unload mm -hmm. too much more than it has to. I did use a Rock Pirate rear brace that you guys can see right here as well. And of course, some, some accents as well to make it kind of just stand out from the rest. Um, at the moment, I'm running Enjora uh, wheels, the, mm -hmm. the ones with the carbon fiber at center, because carbon fiber with carbon fiber mm -hmm. just kind of looks cool, right? Um, and then I'm also running um, Proline trenchers with crawler innervation foams on the inside. Um, dual stage in the front, single stage in the rear. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we have any questions kind of going on on this. Uh, let's go down a little bit. Keep going, keep going. That one. Uh, Which one, this one? Uh, one up. Uh, what is the point of showcasing a vehicle if you replace everything on it with aftermarket? Do a comparison in performance and show stock ascent really does not need anything uh, to be a great truck right out of the box. I think you're kind of missing the point of the show. The show is to show you guys, especially for myself and a lot of folks that are in the hobby, is that there's an actual aftermarket upgrade available for you and that there's actually parts now available if you choose to want to do it. No one is saying you have to make any of these changes to your vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's not what anyone wants you to do. We want you to enjoy to the maximum of your potential, absolutely. Uh, but like anything else, um, if you've been in the hobby long enough and you've been crawling as long as we have, um, I started crawling back in 2010 when we were making our own mm -hmm. axles uh, out of spare parts. So it's come a long way. And having the aftermarket support, especially when you're looking for more of a performance upgrade, then yeah, absolutely. Us showcasing our personal trucks shows that we're invested in working with these mm -hmm. products more so than just rocking a stock truck. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing wrong with rocking a stock truck. I think that is great. And if that is your realm, definitely by all means, all respect to you. I have a stock one, and I have one that I really like to tinker with and kind of go a little bit more extreme. Why? Because why does anyone do anything to their stock vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. You buy a truck, You some people like to lift them and put bigger wheels and tires and performance suspension. 
I treat RCs the same way. So um, it's all preference based, pretty much. Exactly. So this is just showing you guys that listen. There's now parts that are coming into fruition that we're seeing for manufacturers out there to let you guys all know about it and know that there's a little bit more support for the product than just what the factory holds. That's mm -hmm. all this is about. So, but we appreciate your comment. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Dave Sheedy. You the man. Yeah, like um, the, the stock ascent's great. Mm -hmm. It's just depending on how you drive, you might want to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want some more power. Um, that I mean, that's really what most of this is. It's just absolutely, you know, absolutely. You know, I mean, it. like on mine, for instance, what's still left stock? You still have the same transmission, the same mm -hmm. motor plates. You have the same uh, bumper mounts on the front, the same skid, the same. Uh, you know, uh, uh, sliders. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, there's still some stuff left that's original. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I like to... I, this truck, when I first started, was completely stock, and I ran it for hours and hours on end. In fact, I was able to compete with it and have a good time with a lot of great friends in the hobby at Proland by the Fire, and I've been putting hours upon hours on it. At some given point, my blue body was completely trashed, and I said, you know what? I think now is a good mm -hmm. time to start putting some things on it that I had laying around, like my servos and servo winch, to kind of start giving it a different edge and make it more unique to me. It's just my style. It doesn't yeah, have that, to be yours. And that's the other thing. Like, since we're pretty much t testing like pre-production ones, we put like the biggest motor we can or the most torquey thing we can in it, just to make sure it can handle it when you guys go to upgrade in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Um, let's see here. Um, Taco Linko, I love it, man, I love it. Uh, Eric Estep says it, man, you got to personalize it. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. you know what? Some people can just do it with simple stickers, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's enough for you. Yeah, like uh, these are stickers off the RDS mm -hmm. kit. Someone did have a question. What light bars, uh, what light bar do you have sitting on top of the ASM? Uh This is the Pro Line. I think they call it the Slimline 5 inch curved. So it comes in a pack. That's why I have another light bar down here. There you go. Uh, Kevin Klein, hopefully that helped uh, mm -hmm. answer your question. Um, Roadsetter C says, special edition gold descent? No, no. <laughs> that, that, that'd be horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's see here. Let's see, let's see. Blair DeVore, when you released a hauler, I, ha I had to have it and bought it. Uh, you guys showed the Ascent off, and it was like, meh. Now I bought an Ascent and love it. <laughs> Dude, I appreciate the honest you know, comment on that, man. I, you know what? If it works for you, awesome. Um, we've obviously used the Ascent quite a bit on some of the videos as, as we launch new stuff. Uh, sorry, not the Ascent, the, the hauler, because mm -hmm. it's a hauler. It's got to haul all our stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's always fun to, to have, you know? And that's that's the funniest thing, like, especially when people, like, when you get into drift or you get into crawling or you get into something else, eventually you pick up another thing that's totally not your style and you just fall into it. Absolutely. So. And I'm going to say something. Jacob Eekwright, man, thank you so much for swinging on by. He says that this is the first time he's actually catching the live show live and not watching it as a rerun. So, yep. you know what? I'm going to drop your name, man. I appreciate you, Jacob. Thank you so much for that, man. Um, Chris DeGraff, uh, also, it shows the company is in touch with the community by not ignoring innovations brought by smaller companies. Mm -hmm. Together, we push the envelope. Listen, at the end of the day, I agree 100% with Chris DeGraff. It, it's, it takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we just feel humbled to have the support from anyone in the aftermarket. It's something that us at Red Cat just haven't seen a lot of over the course of time. So mm -hmm. to be able to to see that really, really stands out. And we're, we're appreciative of it. Mm -hmm. And to show our appreciation, we want to be able to highlight them on our live show, which is our platform to share with the mm -hmm. world. So um, now talking about H-Tech, we obviously have a couple parts that we have here. This was obviously the front uh, mount, sorry, the front uh, grill that goes in place of the black grill or the, mm -hmm. the folk grill that's on these mm -hmm. as well and includes LED lights on them as well. Uh, Panhard mount install mm -hmm. and as well as like a, a magnet body mount. Yeah, so if you're still rocking the bed, mm -hmm. um, it's a magnet body post for the rear. That's pretty clutch, so man. That's pretty clutch. You don't have to worry about the body clips. So, awesome. So let's get into kind of the next segment of the Ascent that we mm -hmm. wanted to talk about. Shane, I mm -hmm. bought an Ascent. My, it's all stock and, you know, I feel like you guys... Like, it just, I don't know if it's, it just doesn't articulate enough, man. It doesn't have enough, you know, uh, uh, motion for the ocean. So, mm -hmm. you know, what is something that you notice that people have been doing and that you've been recommending people do on their ascent to give them a little bit more uh, articulation and or maybe that, that rear bite mm -hmm. uh, on the ascent? 
Yeah, so when we initially designed it, um, we did put internal springs front and rear in the shocks. Um, for our, uh, I guess, terrain here, um, a lot of the rock is flat, and it's just steep, and that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of, like, riprap or um, crazy articulations needed. Um, but a lot of you guys that are on, like, maybe the East Coast have a lot more, like, rocky situations. Um, so if you take the internal springs out of the rear, uh, it helps with articulation quite a bit. I think this one's got it. So it adds quite a bit compared to stock. We've actually so. seen a couple YouTubers um, mm -hmm. start doing that. Yep. And, uh, we're, you know, we were like, cool, <laughs> that worked out. Mm -hmm. People understood why they, you know, we kept them in there mm -hmm. uh, to begin with to keep it stiff. But, yeah, if you want a little bit more of an edge out of the stock version of the truck mm -hmm. without doing all the crazy modifications that we've done and are buying shocks, because in my opinion, the stock shocks on the Ascent are really great shocks right out of the mm -hmm. gate. Um, but like anything else, your driving style is going to require a little bit of tuning. Some of that tuning might be something as simple as swapping the weight of oil that you use in the shocks, right? Yep, or springs. Or springs, exactly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're going to go over today, live right here, is we're going to show you guys first how to remove that internal spring. The shock, we already removed the oil out of it to make it a little bit less messy. Mm -hmm. So the only difference between how we're going to show you the way it's done and you doing it at home is that there's actually going to be oil in your shock. So having shock oil available, maybe picking up some from your local hobby shop mm -hmm. to top off in case you accidentally tip it over and lose it will be crucial. Mm -hmm. The truck stock, I believe, comes with 30 weight? Uh, yeah, 30 weight. 30 weight oil. So keep that in mind. Uh, 30 weight oil is going to be what comes stock. I personally, on my stock shocks, run 30 weight in the front, and I run 45 to 50 in the rear. I like the rear to be a little stiffer, but that's my mm -hmm. driving style. It doesn't necessarily have to be yours. So buy at your discretion. Lots of places you can find shock oils, your local hobby shops, Amy and Hobbies. Shoot, mm -hmm. you can even get it on Amazon, yep. right? So Shane, um, go ahead and click that camera yeah. really quick, and let's swap over, and let's show you guys quickly what it takes to swap out that, or take out that internal spring. And before we do that, what is the purpose of that spring that's inside? Because, actually, let's, let's swap to the other camera really quick. Yeah, you can probably see this. And then we can show them. Okay. So, Shane, so first and foremost, you have a spring on the outside. Mm -hmm. So is that where you're taking off? Uh, no. So there's actually a spring inside. So if I, hold on. This is our first time using this, so don't judge me. Um, so if I pull this out, that would normally be like you're fully extended. Um, but we put the internal spring so it brings it back. Can this helps you on like vertical climbs or side hilling. It just keeps the whole thing lower. Kind of gives a forced droop. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So uh, we used to do this like five, ten years ago with, uh, we called it a pen spring mod. A pen mod, yeah. Um, but we designed uh, different springs internally that are a little stiffer. So it actually keeps it lower more than like a pen spring from old ages would do. Right, right. So, so obviously so. the way the shock is, the way it sits at a rest, it sits a lot shorter um, of a throw than if you pull it, then you have the actual full throw, yeah. right? So uh, a lot of folks are removing that internal spring for the rears to now have that full stroke. Yep. So yeah, and it gives you another um, probably quarter to half an inch, okay. somewhere around there. So five to, so. to ten mil almost? Yeah, somewhere okay. around there. Awesome. So show them how, uh, how yeah. it's done. So guys, a lot of you guys are going to be doing this. Uh, as we mentioned, you don't even have to take the shock off of the truck axle itself. Mm -hmm. You can just disconnect them from the actual shock tower. Um, or if in this case, you know, you remove the whole shock if you truly want to. Mm -hmm. But this is just as simple as just disconnecting it from the shock tower to access it. Mm -hmm. And Shane, go ahead and show them how yeah. it's done. So uh, once you remove the shock, um, kind of just unscrew the top here. So yep. unscrew this. Uh, there is going to be oil, so just be worried about that. And Down then more. if you look... Down one. Here, let me there take this off. I'm going to change this up a little mm -hmm. bit for you. Hold on. There you go. Okay. Um, so if you look inside, there is a small 5 millimeter nut in there. Um, so if you take like a T-handle, um, one of these sides is usually always going to be 5 mil. The other side is 4.5 you got five, five, and seven. Um, so if you just stick that down in there and just unscrew this. You should be like a hand model, Shane. Like I really, I, do not, I think we just found our new side hustle business. And then just be kind of careful like pulling this apart. 
So when you take it apart, you'll end up with the internal spring. So you can see that. So fully compressed, it's you know, three or four millimeters. So you're getting that extra range. And then you'll have your uh, a small washer that goes under the piston and then the piston itself. Um, some people choose to drill some more holes in the piston. Kind of depends on your oil setup. Uh, the two holes work really well. Um, and then pretty much got just the shaft. You don't want to have that go through because it could rip your o-ring. But then you just kind of slide the piston back on. Now, do you want to compress that shaft? Oh, yeah. Up? So just to show can... everyone. So, now so it's still the same amount of compression, but you get way more extension out of it. And that'll obviously give you guys a little bit more articulation mm -hmm. there for it, right? Yep. Yo, DSM Off-Road's in the house, man. Thank you for stopping by, man. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. We were just talking about your products mm -hmm. just a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah. So all you need to do is throw the piston back on. I'll throw the washer on first and throw the piston on. And then you'll be good to go. I don't know if I can do this on here. So what, what I had to do is I had to compress it so that I can get it. Yeah. We're just we're just gonna act like that went on. We're gonna act or we're gonna put it on. It's it's on going. <laughs> you may want to put it closer to the camera there so they yeah. can see. So. Um, so then you're gonna want to put the nut back on, which it's in there, and you just tighten it. You don't want to tighten this too much. Uh, If you ever go want to go back to the internal spring, uh, it'll be kind of difficult to get back on. And then so this is all the way on with the nut. Uh, and then he, now is where you'll refill it with oil and then just pop the top back on. Right. And just so you guys know, there's a ton of videos on YouTube that shows you how to properly bleed your shocks. Um, mm -hmm. So you can do that. <coughs> we got some spam going on in the chat. There we go. Okay. All right. So then there you go. So that, that's step one. That'll give you a more articulation in the rear, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you so can do this on the front if you want. Um, but if you're doing like crazy vertical climbs, I would just do this in the rear. Um, that'll help keep the front down. Perfect. So um, with that said, obviously we have a specific um, shock or spring rate mm -hmm. that the springs come with, yep. right? The, the factory spring. Uh, don't take that off just yet, because we're going to show them how to do that Kay. for those the folks that unfortunately don't know. Yep. Um, but there's something that uh, you've been we've been set these shocks to be able to house mm -hmm. and, and utilize, which is the tunability of changing springs, mm -hmm. right? What does a spring rate change do for you? Um, so if you make it softer, um, it'll just allow the truck to artic articulate a little better, depending on the situation. Right. So some people like, especially if you have a really heavy truck. You want to go with stiffer springs. If you have a really light truck, you can go way softer. Mm -hmm. so, so some of those yeah. shocks that uh, that folks are using are uh, mini T mm -hmm. springs. And I have the link for that, guys, as well in the description of this video. Um, and I'm going to switch back over to you, Shane. Okay. Um, show them what we're talking about. So. Yeah, so um, a really popular spring set. Um, these are mini T front springs, I believe. Might be rears. Fronts. Um, yeah, yeah, they're fronts. But yeah, they basically come as like, you, you'll see this a lot on like the Facebook page for the Ascent just because they're really popular and easy to get. Um, so there's like a pink soft. I think they say this is a red medium and then a orange firm. Um, so these are, if you go ahead and take the little spring cap off, pop this off. Go down a little bit so they can see. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Let's kind of slide one of these. So something as simple as just uh, removing the lower shock cup, um, removing the shock. Obviously, to do this, you will have to take the shock mm -hmm. assembly off of the truck completely to do so. But now we were able to now have full stroke as well as uh, change the spring rate to a softer spring than mm -hmm. what came from factory. Yeah. And we've been noticing that uh, guys are using, what, pinks in the front right now or oranges? Uh, in pinks in the front and then I believe the medium in the rear. Okay. So, so yeah, guys. So, you know, it, it's literally that simple. Uh, at least a little bit goes a long way. Um, 
when it comes to making those adjustments yeah. and tuning your vehicle. Someone had also asked a question that what was our thoughts on running no spring with 1,000 weight oil, which I believe would be 100 weight oil because it's 1,000 cc CS something, right, I believe? What was it, 1,000 CST or 1,000 weight? I think 1,000 CST. Oh, okay, so yeah. That's which is equivalent to 100, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, it's close, yeah. So it's not exact, but yeah, r r nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, <laughs> and again, I think that's going to be more of the preference of style. And if you've been crawling for a while, um, I'm assuming that's going to give you a lot of droop. Mm -hmm. And if that's the way you like to, to run and that's the way you like to drive for your driving style, then yeah, hey, more power to you. Another mm -hmm. great option. And it's really easy at that point. You remove the internal spring uh, out of all four shocks, mm -hmm. remove the lower cup, uh, spring cup, remove the springs, uh, the outer spring as well. Uh, drain the oil out and then refill it with fresh oil and making sure that you bleed them properly. So uh, all of these things will kind of change uh, the habit of how you drive mm -hmm. and make it kind of more enjoyable as well for you too. I always like to start with a stock truck um, and utilizing it and knowing what its capabilities are. And there's just like no funner thing than to be able to then make small adjustments like the ones we're describing with you guys with, uh, you know, shock oil, um, shock springs, and then obviously go crazy as, you know, DSM off-road chassis rails and, you know, uh, shock towers or, you know, maybe even running different shocks like deluxe shocks that uh, Shane's running or I'm running Chronics on mine, uh, MIP drive lines, and then you start going crazy with, you know, the added things, you know, obviously a little bit of brass in the front to keep the nose down kind of goes a long way. It just depends on how far you really want to go. The Ascent was never really created to be a, a, you know, trail truck. It was meant in specifically to be more of a crawler and the best bang for your buck type of crawler. So obviously now that it's in your hands, it's up to you guys to make the best out of it and, you know, make it unique to yourself and make it stand out and enjoyable. Know that we do sell the bodies. If you want to rock the stock body and change the color, you can do so. Shane did the same thing with his. Uh, he bought the front cap half and painted it red. I bought the front cap half and painted mine black. Uh, I ended up putting uh, the ghost affected, yeah, here we go, uh, logo of Red Cat. You guys can see it right here on this side, uh, as well as on the top there, and there's one on the back. So, uh, you know, definitely, I think one of the greatest things, in my opinion, when you're enjoying the hobby when it comes to crawlers, is making things unique to yourself and finding that, uh, you know, recipe that works with your style of driving. Some people like running a lot of droop. I used to, um, and then now I, the last couple of years, I've been running 80 mil shocks on my crawlers and belly dragging everything because it's just the way I like to drive. So mm -hmm. find your style, but whatever you're doing, make sure that you're enjoying it. Make sure you're having fun with it because that's what it's all about. Tinkering away, going home after a long week and getting your tools out and upsetting the wife or your significant other because you took over the dining table or the counter space to wrench on your truck because you're going to go crawl the next morning, right? Mm -hmm. Shane, I know, whatever, you have your own laboratory at home, I get it, but not all of us have that leisure, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So uh, let's double check here for a couple uh, comments as well. Um, Pilot Ryan M Media, man, thank you for stopping by, I appreciate that. Mile High RC, man, love it, thank you. Cliff Fork says, uh, Polk Country Trail Crawlers checking in. Uh, just got an ascent this week. Thank you for that, man. We hope you will love it. We hope you enjoy it and start to have a good time with it. Um, Juan Antonio says, do you guys know anybody that does uh, two welding create a road cage? I think he means like an exo cage. Oh, like an exo cage? Um, yeah. That's usually a, like get on a local crawler group and ask around. Uh, not too many people do that like commercially, so... Heck yeah. TSM Off-Road says, I'm dropping a comp bed for the stock chassis equipped uh, trucks tomorrow. E, there you go. Yeah. Guys, just like I told you guys earlier when we were talking about uh, DSM Off-Road, mm -hmm. um, I'll show you guys really quick. Um, so when we're on their website, we're showing you guys their, their rails that they offer and a, a lot of the parts that they offer the Ascent already. He offers this bed that you guys see here already specifically for the Ascent Rock Warrior chassis, he's gonna offer a uh, option of this that fits the factory uh, frame rails as, as well. And those will drop tomorrow. So I like that. I might actually have to order a set for my truck because I think that's kind of one of the things that, that I feel 
it needs. You know what I mean? Just a, kind of like the icing on the cake, so yeah. to speak. Not so. everyone likes rocking the just a cab with no bed, so. I do. Different I mean, options for different people. I mean, so, some people don't like running around naked, and I understand that. Um, I usually get in trouble and or arrested if I did that, so I understand that the crawler scene might arrest me if, if my truck's running naked like that, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, let's see that. Luke Claxton, Lukey Luke, what's up, Puddin'? How you doing, bro? Hopefully you're doing well. Um, Dave Sheedy says, uh, oh, let me make sure I read this first comment uh, that I might have missed. But he made a good comment, man. Make sure you guys are out there supporting your local hobby shops mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, those brick and mortar shops are the reason why a lot of us even got into the hobby to begin with. Because hopefully you have one around your corner mm -hmm. uh, of your neighborhood. Make sure you guys are giving them any love possible. I try to shop at any hobby shop that I am, you know, around. But equally so, you know, people like Rock Pirates, people like DSM Off-Road, people like H-Tech or anyone that's creating products for our vehicles, I like to support. And I don't just reach out and be like, yo, can I get this for free? Like, I'll go out and buy them. I support I don't extort. And I think that's a great avenue to make sure we keep the hobby alive and well yes. and uh, moving forward, right? So keep that in mind, guys, when you guys are out there spending your uh, shillings. I yeah, said, that's, uh, that's right. I did it right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Duck, ducats? No? I don't know about that one. Okay. Shillings yeah. for sure. All right. <laughs> um, uh, Salah. Salad Boy wants is how much sag do you guys like? I don't know. After I lost a lot of weight, I started getting a lot of sag everywhere. So it's been kind of weird. I've been trying to, you know, kind of figure out how to fix that. Just kidding. Um, you know, everyone has a, a certain amount of droop that they like. It really is your preference. Um, I set mine up to have approximately about 10 uh, mil on average of, of droop. But I have had other shocks where I'll run like 110 with like 20 or 30 millimeters of droop on them uh, it just really depends on the weight of the truck and, and what your your primary goal is to use it and the way you drive again mm -hmm. i emphasize that really strictly because everyone drives a, a lot different mm -hmm. shane sets his truck up completely different than i do mm -hmm. but ironically enough when shane and i go crawling with a lot of the guys that we work with him and i are the ones that are battling it out mm -hmm. like non-stop and our trucks are set up completely different yet our style of driving warrants us to do the great mm -hmm. things that we can with the way we set up our trucks to our liking so yeah like I, I basically run mine like fully drooped out in the rear versus mm -hmm. like Oscars um, yeah. but in the in the rear I run I don't know five six millimeters of uh, I guess sag so. there done <laughs> Luke Lashing tell Mr. Beast I want a taste of his chocolate <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. He's got the he's got that organic one available now. You might want to check into that gluten free because I know you, I know you have allergies. So, um, curbside classics. What's going on with you, man? Thank you for stopping by, Dustin Cooley, man. Thank you as well for swinging on by. Uh, one fifth eight S truck would be sick. Someone says. Yep. Will we ever do something cool like that? I'm not the guy who does bashers. So I don't know. Oh shoot. They don't what, tell what me. What do you do? Stuff and things. Stuff and things. I, yeah. I thought that's Aaron's title. Well, Aaron does stuff and things. He's the. Uh, CEO of it. Okay. You know. All right. I see so you. I just do uh, it every once in a while, you know. I love it, man. I love it. All right, guys. So, yeah. So, there you guys go, man. That's uh, today's episode, as mentioned, when it comes around, when it, it focuses around the ascent. Talked a little bit about parts that are available that we've been able to see and that there's actually websites for, which is always refreshing to, to have happen. And uh, seeing the support from anyone in the aftermarket, man, we appreciate it greatly. We really do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we went over Hardcore RC, DSM Off-Road, Trio, H-Tech. Uh, we went over some Deluxe shocks. We went over the uh, way that you remove that internal spring mm -hmm. off of your shock to give you a little bit more articulation. We also showed you guys how easy it is to swap out those uh, springs on your factory shocks with the Mini T springs that are available at potentially your local hobby shop or somewhere like a -Main. Links to all of the products that you guys have seen here on today's show are in the description of this video. Some of the last things that we're going to leave you guys with, with is where we will be in the next coming weeks. So, first and foremost, coming up this weekend, we are going to have a booth set up at Barrett-Jackson. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. We're going to be at Barrett-Jackson. So, I might, uh, I, might, I might actually enjoy bidding on a car that I can't afford. Um, and then I'm just going to use his wallet because... Shane, right? Yeah. So and Bear Jackson's pretty much the at this point, I think the Scottsdale one's probably the biggest Bear Jackson in the country. I, I do believe so. I mean it's so, it's the one that I always watch on Speed Channel back in the yeah. day. You know? Well one of the biggest car auctions in basically the world 
is in Scottsdale up the street. So mm -hmm. we'll have a booth there. Absolutely. So. so, you know, there you guys have it, man. We'll be at uh, Bear Jackson this week. It's a nine-day event. Mm -hmm. We go set up on Friday, and uh, we'll be there the entire week. I may not be there every day, but I'll try and get you guys some kind of video content while I'm out there to share with you guys on next week's live show. Um, and uh, after that, we will be getting ready for the Lowrider Magazine Lowrider Super Show, which is back in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So Official. Official. So, uh, obviously, we had them come back, and it was always held in Scottsdale. Not this time. This time, they're going to go all out. Little Rider Magazine is going to hold it down Saturday, February 17th, and it goes from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. Uh, link for tickets if you want to purchase tickets are available. Link is in the description of this video. Uh, the show is going to be held at the Phoenix Convention Center. should be a great time and a great way to kick off the year. The next month after that, going into March, we should be in Long Beach for the Lowrider mm -hmm. Super Show out there, which should be another great time. Always, always an amazing time, never disappoints. So make sure that uh, you're following up, and if you're going to participate, make sure you check it out. Let's make it happen. It's always a fun time when we're at these shows and events. I love mingling with everyone. I love taking pictures of everyone. It's kind of my thing. It's what I geek out on. So, again, today's show, wrap-up, ascent, in full. You guys know where we're going to be at the next couple of days. We also have Shane over here not knowing what to do with his hands. So we're yes. going to let him uh, take off and uh, enjoy mm -hmm. the rest of his evening. So, um, JD's RC, thank you so much for the comment. Appreciate that. Joshua Trayer, thank you so much as well. Uh, Cardboard Crawlers RC, a nice couple of ascents there. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully pretty solid. Hopefully I can keep mine. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Let's see. If you buy a car, just uh, bill it to the Underhills. <laughs> I'm with you there. I love that. Great, great comment. Um, Cliff Fork says, February, C-S-T-R-E in uh, Bushnell, Florida would be nice. Haven't heard much about that. I actually wouldn't mind going back to Florida. I uh, enjoyed USTE. Always enjoyed the vibe. So that might be cool. So, all right, guys. You guys stay blessed. Links to anything you guys saw is in the description of this video. So shop with, uh, um, what was I going to say? Shop the with aftermarket confidence. vendors. Yeah. Support those aftermarket yeah. vendors. Give us love. Not us. Give them love. Mm -hmm. Give us some likes. Follow us, please. We beg of you. Give us some likes. Throw some tacos at your boy. You guys stay safe. Stay blessed. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same channel, same ugly face. Peace.